And then I told him, I'm not going to buy any more running shoes. <laughs> oh, hi. It's time for another running shoe, yay or nay, for you. It's Ed Shoehorn Bud here. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us here on the channel. I got four real corkers for you today. Just to explain, this show isn't me saying that a shoe is fantastic or terrible. I can't tell until I've got it on foot. This is me explaining the reasoning behind whether I'll pick up a pair of these shoes or not. It might be that some other shoe tuber out there could do the shoe more justice. It might be that I just really want the shoes. That's what it is most of the time. Okay, let's get to it. Shoe number one. I'm sure you guys have all seen that incredibly fire new Takumi Sen 8 that Adidas unveiled the other weekend. Oh boy, oh boy, what a shoe. You guys know I love that Adi Zero Adios 6 and this has got some vibes of that. It's also got some vibes of the Adios Pro 2 and I've reviewed the last two Takumi Sens and I really like them. I'd say they're not for the faint of heart. They're certainly less cushioned than a lot of people might want these days, but I really enjoyed them. I'm like a wind sock, like a man filled with helium. I just take off when the wind blows. It's certainly a low to the floor responsive shoe, or at least that's what it's been in the past. It looks as if they've upped the heel stack a little bit here. I think it's about 33 millimeters. At least that's what it says on the little square. There's a bit of a revamp, actually, you have to be honest, guys. The upper appears almost like all of the Adios Pro 2 upper, without perhaps some of the additional eyelets, though that medial band is still present there on the Sen 8, and the toe box reinforcements appear very similar to the Adios Pro 2. The top of the tongue almost looks leathery, doesn't it? Of course, the big change here is the movement away from Light Strike and Boost to a full Light Strike Pro midsole, with a really odd lateral side cut out there. Isn't that strange, guys? And of course, on the medial side, you've got those exposed energy rods. I'm not sure if those rods are the same ones that appear in the Adios Pro 2, or whether those sort of glassy type ones that we've got in the Boston 10. <coughs> I don't like saying those words. It brings back bad memories. In fact, the Boston 10 has been exiled to the Wellington boot area downstairs. Outside wise, it's a bit of a mishmash between continental stuff, between the midfoot to the forefoot, and then that smoother rubber that we've seen on the Pro and Pro 2, which is very tactile. It's almost chalkboard stuff. Sandpaper on a chalkboard, that's not nice. Both female and male athletes recorded some very, very good times wearing the shoe at the weekend. Couple that with the look and potential feel of the Adios 6, but with more Light Strike Pro than... Oh, it's an absolute surefire yay from me on the Takumi Sen 8. Whenever it comes out. Hopefully very soon. Very, very excited for that shoe people. Shoe people? That was a good show. I used to enjoy watching that when I was a child. Anyway, let's get back to it. Shoe two is another Adidas shoe. Not one, but two Adidas winners on today's show. Yes, I have had issues with the Adios Pro 2 documented in the last video. I can rectify that with a bit of glue. It'll be all right. Fingers crossed. But this Berlin German international football team colorway of the Adios Pro 2 is amazing. This, guys, is one of the best looking running shoes I've seen in a long, long time. It's a thing of true beauty. The split midsole of incendiary red top line and calipo yellow make for an eye catching combo, I think you'll agree. A little black current starburst hit in the heel around that ankle padding, three steely silver slashes across the foot, and a charcoal black upper. Mean I'm powerless to resist this one. I've got to pick these up in my size if they resurface. I've missed out on the initial batch on the Adidas website and I'm really upset about it. Even the outsole is a yellow wonder, complete with energy rod highlights on the forefoot rubber. Sometimes shoe colorways that are released seem a bit of an afterthought, don't they? They've just thrown a few colors together and gone, yeah, that'll do. But this version of the Pro 2 really shows some signs of thought and attention to detail. Every aspect's just been carefully considered for this Berlin Marathon colorway. Well done, Adidas. You cats have really struck gold with this one. I'll forgive you on the Boston 10, just this once. It's an absolute yay if I can find this colorway for the Adios Pro 2. Berlin Marathon version. Maybe one of my German viewers can help me out, you know, if you can find a UK 11. It's just beautiful. It's a wondrous thing, that shoe. Shoe three. Now, there's a viewer keep 
keeps telling me to review this shoe. I've never even heard of it until the other day, but I think I need to talk about it here. The Asics Gel Kinsai Blast. Okay, so this shoe is roughly 216 Earth credits here in the UK, $300 US. It's like Asics have got every single shoe technology widget and thrown it into one. Mixed it up like a big steaming cauldron of goulash. Even a pull tab is included. Let's dive into this mammoth of a midsole. So we've got Flight Phone Blast Plus here. So they've put a plus on the end of it and made it even more squashy maybe. Who knows? Asics have split that up with a P-Bax plate perhaps in the middle to introduce some stability possibly to that super compressive foam. You've even got gel portions here guys in the heel and under the balls of your foot. Maybe included for maximum shock absorbency. Perhaps a little like Nike's Air Zoom unit. I have to say a beautiful and striking upper on this shoe. The design is wonderful. It has a frosty forest vibe with the green gel trees and the blue hits in the rear of the shoe like an icy lakeside. I can imagine the foxes running around, the squirrels, maybe a lone figure ice skating. A wondrous looking shoe this one guys with real visual appeal. I think perhaps for me a bit of an overkill on cushion, I'm not sure I need all of that stuff in there. Not suitable for me really and my running exploits. I'd feel weird about buying it and preventing someone else from using it maybe for its intended purpose. I think one for those that demand a massive cushion, perhaps for some pain free running if you've had an injury maybe. Or well, those joints just need that extra bit of shock absorption. Maybe one for those who are attempting super long distance adventures. A nay from me on this one, though I think it is a really interesting shoe. Perhaps a little too rich for something I just don't really need. Shoe four. I'm really excited for when in late October, Atreyu running are going to be dropping their new base model version two. We got four key colorways here, guys. The classic blue and white, We've also got a white and gold model, a mainly black one, but also a black with red midsole as well. We appear to have a very big upgrade here from the V1 model in terms of the midsole type. It's super critical EVA. And we still have that trademark Atreyu lightweight feel. Only a six mil offset between the heel and the toe. I also really love the quote on their website. Vanity overlays, heavy rubbers, useless details, not included. I so love that and only 85 US Earth credits. So I think I'm convinced enough by the midsole change here to go for a pair of these. I've wanted to test out some Atreyu stuff for a while but I think this one could hit the spot for me. I'm a lightweight guy and I need a lightweight shoe. It's like if I wore a pair of cowboy boots I just look like an idiot. And Wellington boots just make me feel like a discount Father Christmas. I think introducing this other type of foam into the midsole material will give the shoe a much broader appeal. I think some people found the V1 a little bit too firm. I think this will eliminate that issue. A simple design with a severe lack of bells and whistles, which is always good. People moaning about a few grams extra in their favorite shoe. No pull tabs required. A little bit like Phil Collins, no jacket required. So it's a yay for me on the Atreyu base model version two. I just hope they do that racing green version because that's a nice bit of kit. Those are the four shoes in today's Yo and A. Let me know what you think of them down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. It was only today I was thinking about adding some extra tracks to my half marathon playlist ready for the great Bristol half at the weekend. I was thinking Bristol artists and musicians that I can put on the playlist. Ronnie Size and DJ Crust. Just so happens that Ronnie Size has got a new single out only last week. How bizarre. It's a good one as well. It's called Two Sides. It's with Colette Warren and Raya as well. Very fast paced, a lot faster than some of Ronnie Size's older work that I'm more familiar with. Lots of energy here though, slamming beats. Still with that Ronnie Size kind of produced feel that I used to really enjoy. He had his very own vibe, his own kind of take on the drum and bass and jungle scene. I used to find it magical that Ronnie Size was producing awesome tunes just a few miles away in Bristol. When I was a young lad, he was a really, really big inspiration to me growing up and just this kind of vibe really. Glad to see you still making some tunes and this is a good one that will have to be included on the playlist. It's got just the right energy that I will require to try and get under 130. So go and check it out. Ronnie Size with Colette Warren and Raya. This one's called Two Sides. Thanks for tuning in and sticking with me to the end of today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please help the channel out by clicking that subscribe button and also 
hitting that bell for notifications when we launch the new stuff for you. And it really helps out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.